Program number 131. Three, two, one. I'm visiting with Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization. He's just returned from attending the World Conference of Farmers, part of that uh, international federation, which was held in Trondheim, Norway. Devon, I'd like to ask a number of questions that bear on issues that get talked about all the time. For instance, the GATT agreements, general agreements on tariffs and trade, the Geneva round, the upcoming rounds of negotiations, our agriculture department saying, let's wait to see what they say before we legislate the 1990 Farm Act, and they keep talking about free trade. Why do they mention free trade all the time? Agriculture has become one of the key topics for discussion, and it uh, came about because our government wanted to uh, bring the issue of free trade to the world. Uh, by this meaning elimination of all farm payment programs and recommending to all countries of the world that they begin to eliminate any farm support type programs. It's not a favorite position to have. It's not one that's being endorsed. Uh, we, uh, in our meeting with the International Federation of Agriculture Producers, which is a uh, uh, the only worldwide organization of agriculture producers. It's not a favorite position to take uh, because many of those countries recognize that agriculture must have support from their governments in order to survive in the world uh, agriculture. Uh, and so as the discussion on free trade developed uh, uh, and became part of that uh, GATT discussions, we discussed it as well. Uh, in our forum there in Trondheim, uh, Norway. Food-producing nations ought to understand each other's needs better, right? Well, that's true. There are 75 different countries that have become involved either directly through membership or as observers. We had 52 membership or uh, countries there in our meeting, and as you listen to and discuss with formally and informally, you find that uh, we have a lot of friends in the world who take the position that we take, uh, not necessarily the position that uh, the USDA takes or that's being uh, taken by the negotiators at GATT, but uh, we have a lot of uh, friends in the world who understand agriculture as we do. Devon Woodland, president of the National Farmers Organization, uh, just back from Trondheim, Norway, where he attended the 29th World Farmers Congress. Phil Allen for our magazine of the air, here's info. And that for today is something to think about. Number 132, three, two, one. We have as guest on our magazine of the air, here's info, Merle Sunken. He's head of the hog division, NFO. Merle, we keep hearing about $70 hogs. Is this going to develop? Well, there, the first part of June uh, was the highest hog market, I believe, ever recorded in history. The uh, market was around 68 and a half. Uh, some of the good quality hogs uh, through our program uh, did hit the $70, just a little bit over that. In just a day or so, the government's pig crop report is going to be out near the end of June, always. What do you think? Well, uh, at the present time, it looks like this uh, June pig crop report, uh, all hogs and pigs on hand, uh, in comparison to last June figures, will probably be within 1%. But uh, it looks like from the December uh, pig crop report of uh, last year and then also the March pig crop report, it looks like uh, the, the on-hand pigs will uh, be something close thereof. But the, I think the sleeper that no one has been looking at, uh, so far anyways, is in March, December and March, and that was the farrowing intentions, we very definitely feel that it uh, will be up 4 to 6 percent from those. But now compared to a year ago, and so I guess it's depending upon which one you're comparing to, but we do very definitely think there's going to be quite a few more hogs coming up in the fourth quarter and again in the first quarter of 1991. Okay, if they intend to produce more hogs, what do you recommend? Well, of course, uh, the, when they produce more hogs and the way the packing industry has backed off their kills and so forth, and many packing plants have closed their doors, there's a lot of pressure on the market. The market will be going down, 
And uh, so at that point, uh, we very definitely recommend to Ford contract these hogs. Uh, once again, always understanding your cost of production. That's the first thing you must understand is what it costs you to produce those hogs and then lock them in because right now for the fourth quarter of 1990, you could lock in a, uh, a price for all your hogs at uh, something around a 51 and a half to a $52 market. And then clear through for the next 11 months, starting from August for the next 11 months, you could uh, have a price of well over $50. And I think producers really need to take a look at that because it's been many years since we've been able to have the opportunity we've had in the, in the 1990s to uh, have this kind of hog market. I've been talking with Merle Sunken, head of the hog division NFO, for our magazine of the air. Here's info, and that for today is something to think about. Number 133, 3, 2, 1. We have Steve Halloran, head of the Grain Department of National Farmers Organization, for our guest today on Here's Info, our magazine of the air. Steve, there's a bullish psychology in the grain market now. What about that? Well, there is, Phil, and a lot of it is pushed by the weather, wet spring, delayed plantings, uh, projection of a slight uh, slighter carryover than in past years. Uh, I have a major concern about producers uh, falling into the herd instinct of a bullish consensus. It's an easy one to fall into. I want to. Everybody wants to have bullish uh, news and have high prices. But very often these peaks come very quick and they become very narrow and they fall off rapidly. I don't know that there's ever been a time that we've seen the prices go up that we haven't seen Phil, we haven't seen the government do something. That's right. The government can really move in when they want to, can't they? Well, they can, and they're very creative. Uh, m my concern is, Phil, is that they'll pull into their hat full of tricks to come up with something that uh, is just as creative as the PIC certificate program uh, that will have a price-depressing effect on the markets. Well, why would the government want lower prices? Secretary Yider has been talking very boldly and bluntly about the European Common Market and about his desire to put them in their place with the uh, trade war uh, mentality. And uh, he's also been discussing this kind of blunt language with Japan. My concern, Phil, is, is that uh, it'll go beyond just mere talk in that uh, he will perform a trade war with them. And in order to do that, you've got to have one thing, and that's, that's right. low price commodities. And... Uh, I, I fear that, in fact, they'll, they'll do something like this, depress the prices of the grains so they can perform market-clearing prices and, and, and dump it on the European common market or against them with their trade partners and, uh, and go to Congress and ask for subsidies to offset that. And in the long run, that's detrimental to agriculture. Then the psychology that you're, you're on your own if you want to be a grain farmer t uh, takes over, doesn't it? Well, that's right, it does. And uh, we're we're playing uh, we're playing with the big league, and the fact that Yider came came from GATT uh, talks to uh, Secretary of Agriculture suggests that he wants to do something still uh, still tough to those people, and uh, I think the people who are going to get hurt are the obvious ones. I've been talking with Steve Halloran, head of the Grain Department of the NFO. Phil Allen for our magazine of the air. Here's info, and that for today is something to think about. Number 134, 3, 2, 1. I'm talking now to the two top professionals in NFO's publications, Lana Pauls, who is editor of the NFO Reporter, and Mark Moore, who does the artwork on the Reporter and other publications. I understand you have a new magazine, Lana. Tell us about it. Yes, we do, Phil. It's a general information magazine on the National Farmers Organization. And it is a four-color book that's available to the general public. Alana, I'm going to talk to Mark Moore for a minute. The magazine here has a design that uh, you really thought up and did the artwork for. Tell us about it. Well, we wanted to explain how NFO evolved from a protest movement into what it is today. So we went with the concept of a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. So on the front cover, there's a, a plant with a cocoon on the bottom and a caterpillar crawling up the side of it. And up in the upper right-hand corner is a beautiful butterfly. 
symbolizing how NFO has come along. Is this an in-house publication, Lana, or is this for the whole public? No, Phil, this is for anybody who would like any information on the National Farmers Organization. It covers some of our history, and it covers what, what we are going to become in the future, as well as what we are today. Show me some of the features and some of the pictures in it. Okay, Phil. It starts out with uh, NFO's history, and as most people in the audience probably know, in 1955, NFO became, uh, was a farm protest movement. But today, it is a, a marketing agency in common for all farmers. And uh, as you go through the book, you see pictures of, of grain marketing and dairy marketing and livestock marketing and of communications. We have a complete communications department and also um, legislative pictures because we also have a legislative branch. And it really, really describes the NFO as a whole. Mark, there are a lot of full-color pictures in it, aren't there? Well, so you have to go with the four-color process, which is something new that we're just beginning to enter into. Um, it's a completely different process than what we're used to. We're usually, everything we do is two-color, three-color possibly. And it just really makes the whole publication look a lot better. Lana, tell how people might get a copy. Well, they can call the NFO headquarters office, Phil, in Corning, Iowa, or they can write to us at 720 Davis Avenue, Corning, Iowa, 50841. I've been talking with Lana Pauls and Mark Moore, uh, the two top leaders in the publications of the NFO, and they have a new magazine. Phil Allen for our magazine of the air. Here's info. And that for today is something to think about. Number 135, three, two, one. South Dakota Congressman Tim Johnson said he felt disappointed, but determined to keep fighting for family farmers after the House Agricultural Committee defeated his dairy proposal for the new farm bill. He proposed, first, to assure dairy farmers could earn their cost of production by setting a floor price of $13.10 per hundred weight on milk. Second, save taxpayers approximately $200 million per year in payments since dairy earnings would come from a two-tiered price system that would pay a good price for only the quantity of dairy products actually needed by American consumers and export markets. And third, stop efforts by the administration to drastically slash the price earned by farmers for their milk to $8.60 per hundredweight, which is far beneath the cost of production. I talked to the South Dakota congressman and asked him this question. Why is it important that uh, dairy producers, you know, get cost of production plus a reasonable profit? American consumers are the best fed, most cheaply fed people on earth. Uh, it's amazing what we're able to do uh, for uh, a very low price as American consumers. What we need to do is to maintain that infra infrastructure of family farm producers, who are the most efficient producers of all, uh, so that we don't wind up in a world of agribusiness corporate giants controlling food supply. When that happens, uh, the consumer is going to lose and lose big. So we need to, to remind our urban congressmen that it's in their interests to maintain a strong infrastructure of family farmers. South Dakota Congressman Tim Johnson, who's on the House Agricultural Committee and was guest on Here's Info, our magazine of the year. I'm Don Mack, and that for today is something to think about.